Guayando. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. There's no other multimedia icon in pop culture that has had their reputation be made completely irreparable, quite like Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog, a character whose video games are so beloved by many in assuredly the past, present, and future, but still one who, regrettably, pushes many people away just the same. You've heard the history, you've heard the horror stories, the heartache, the betrayal, the passion, but you've yet to hear me. You haven't heard about what I have to say about one misstep that caused the blue blur to half of his reputation. You've definitely heard about Sonic Team and their mad dash to appease their consumer base after 2005's Shadow the Hedgehog, and how they began work on a new game for the illustrious Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. You've heard about the hype that followed suit, and the catastrophic inability for the team to back up the most recent version of the game, and having to polish an early beta for release instead. You've heard about the character's creator jumping ship from the company, and the development team splitting into two to port the game to inferior hardware, a port that never came to be. And you have definitely seen the internet rite of passage that is discussing this game online, and over the last 16 years after its original release, this is a trend that still continues. But why? Why would seemingly just another 3D Sonic game from the mid-2000s be anything to write home about after all these years? For the folks at home, you're probably waiting for yet another unashamed evisceration of this game, and to many of you, it's rightfully deserved. I'm sure there's another portion of you that want me to present you with a revisionist zoomer take on the game, having me fight a crusade about why the game is a misunderstood product of its time, and I guarantee that there's a great many of you who haven't even clicked onto this video be precisely because you're smart enough to not indulge another miserable screaming idiot on YouTube beating a dead horse that has long since died. For the folks at home that want to hear a more in-depth tearing apart of this game, I've linked three of the best reviews for this game in the description below. Yeah, to watch all of them is like four to five hours total, but I swear they're worth the wait. This video is going to be more about the legacy of Sonic 06 and how I personally feel about the game. I feel like I already covered the history in the intro, but it's important to understand just how many people were hyped for this game. After the audiences responded so positively to the first two Sonic Adventure games, it makes sense why audiences were so winded after Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog. But at least this new game, Sonic Next Gen, was going to be the game that fans had been clamoring for. The greatest Sonic game ever made. Obviously, you know that didn't happen, but you understand why that didn't happen. To make an open and shut case about this, the game suffered mostly for its zealous overambition. Let me make things a bit clearer for the folks at home. It wasn't glitches that killed Sonic 06, it was the devs that got too big for their britches. Not sure what I mean? How about the opening cinematics for each of the three campaigns? They look nice, right? Well. The budget is blown on these cutscenes and all of the in-game cutscenes, you know, the ones that you spend the most amount of time watching, just look like crap. Even for 2006, this was inexcusable. How about the sheer number of playable characters? Yeah, extra playable characters have been a mainstay for this series since the Genesis games, but I think 9 characters was a little much for this game, especially because they all suck to play as anyway. They only advertise Sonic Shadow and Silver on the back of the box anyway. But probably worse than this is the rehashed levels. You play this stupid ass beach level in the beginning like four times over the course of this game, and it just gets worse and worse the later into the game you get. Have you noticed a theme here? Yeah, it's the developers biting off way more than they can chew. Say what you will about Rise of Lyric or even Forces, which, for the record, is probably a worse game than 06. But both of those games knew that they were gonna turn out like shit. So what did the devs do? They shortened them, and they just made them games with a single unitary vision. Sonic 06? There's no vision anywhere, except for maybe making the game deliberately bad. Because the developers were dead set on having 9 playable characters, high fidelity cutscenes, and big realistic levels. And that's why the game turned out like shit! This was all opposed to, say, just having a game where you play as Sonic and Shadow, who play mostly the same apart with some guns and maybe Silver being some cool Force Unleashed type character. 
and having a decent number of fun, high-speed levels with a story that doesn't take itself seriously like the adventure games. But no. Instead, we got a game whose art direction looks like it's some Lovecraftian hodgepodge between Final Fantasy XIII at best and Red vs. Blue at worst. We get some stupid JRPG-inspired plot that turns the wisecracking fastest thing alive into your typical characterless shonen protag loser with no attitude, and we get a scene where Meg from Family Guy kisses Silent from Pokemon. You know, that's just unbelievable. Just unbefucking leaveable that they just let this game happen. I mean, it's not like there was any way of saving it, though. Sega wouldn't delay the game because they absolutely needed it for their holiday launch that year, and they were stuck in contracts with Sony and Microsoft to have the game out by Christmas as well. But even if those constraints didn't exist, we would have still gotten a game where it's not even fun to run around and use the homing attack. In a Sonic game. A fucking Sonic game where you can't run fast, can't spin dash whenever you want to, and you can't use the homing attack as fast as you want. What a fucking travesty. How could things get any worse? Oh yeah, that's how. I fucking hate that game, man. Look, the real tragedy in all this though is that we haven't really gotten a Sonic game like the adventure games in forever solely because of this game. It tainted all the goodwill in this style of 3D platformer. But worse, I think that this was supposed to be the greatest Sonic game ever made. Had this actually been Sonic Adventure 3 and had some creative force step in and fix this shit, we could have actually had a landmark title here. Perhaps something that could have rivaled Mario Galaxy 1 just a year later. But alas, that didn't happen. If you're crazy enough to actually want to play this game, I recommend just playing Chaos X's PC remake that's currently in progress. Right now I think the fixes that have been made shed some light on what this perfect Sonic game could have been had the original devs put more care into it. I've linked his YouTube channel with a download link to it if you're curious. It's certainly one of the best 3D Sonic fan games in recent memory. Probably the best Sonic game ever, <laughs> if it finishes. As for the original, don't even bother. It's not even backwards compatible on Xbox. But hey, if Microsoft ever does make it backwards compatible, you can expect me to play that for you guys. That's all for now. See you guys tomorrow. In this world, this world.